ਸਸਟੀਕਾਲ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਵੈਲਕਮ ਟੂ ਦ ਥਰਡ ਆਨਲਾਈਨ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਲੈਕਚਰ ਆਫ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟਿੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਕਾਸਟਿੰਗ ਇਨ ਇਲੈਕਟ੍ਰੀਕਲ ਇੰਜੀਨੀਅਰਿੰਗ ਐਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਡ ਡਿਸਕਸਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਲਾਸਟ ਵੀਡੀਓ ਦੈਟ ਦ ਐਸਟੀਮੇਟ ਆਫ ਦ ਟੋਟਲ ਕਾਸਟ ਇਨਵੋਲਵਡ ਆਨ ਦ ਪ੍ਰੋਜੈਕਟ ਇਸ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਡ ਇਨ ਟੂ ਸਟੈਪਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਗੋਨ ਥਰੂ ਵਨ ਆਫ ਥੈਮ ਥੈਟ ਵਾਸ ਦ ਡਿਟਰਮੀਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਕੁਆਂਟਿਟੀ ਆਫ ਮਟੀਰੀਅਲ ਐਂਡ ਇਟਸ ਕਾਸਟ in this session we will be determining the labor charges now to arrive at the final conclusion for determination of a labor charges for wiring uh, in a particular building or doing some electrical installation it's really difficult because the labor charges may differ at different places like for instance in cities a trained electrician may be charging about uh, 400 a day but whereas in case of rural areas it is just half the amount the labor charges are thus decided under three methods that have been developed so far the first is as per work duration and work amount that is actual labor cost as paid to the daily wagers the second one is uh, electrical point method or uh, as per unit work basis and the third one is as per percentage of the material cost now we'll be taking them one by one starting with the first that is as per work duration and work amount if the wiring work is to be completed on this method that is on the duration and work amount then skilled workers are generally employed and that to on daily wages now the decision to employ the number of person actually depends upon the number of electrical points to be wired and the number of days for the completion of the work now the labor rates are decided as per the current labor rates in the city or the suburban area the number of electricians firemen and other persons required for the job are actually determined on the basis of number of points to be wired and number of days the job is likely to be completed now the calculation of the work duration depends on the number of points to be wired divided by number of points they are actually likely to wire in one day coming back to the table class of labor is categorized then uh, number of days for the work and rate per day which comes to a total of total payment that is rate divide, uh, multiplied by the number of days the second method is electrical point method this is quite easy and the prevalent method and is based on unit work basis for the determination of charges for a particular project now in this system the total number of points in the building are counted total numbers in the uh, number of points in the building means total number of points that are to be installed whole of the uh, electrification work is counted in this this will include installations of the main board then the switch boards the labor rate per unit is paid to an approved contractor in the case of government buildings whereas in case of private buildings uh, to an individual who is a trained electrician or a wireman and then the total labor cost can be calculated description of work see we are considering the main board to be one point and we have just for the example sake we have kept a rate for one point to be rupees 20 so main board will be considered as one point and the rate will be 20 therefore 20 to 1 is 20 and then to be two switch boards at the rate two points for each switch board is considered to be 2 point each 
that means total of four points and the rate of the point is same that is 20 light and fan point is considered as a eight point therefore the total amounts to be 260 the third method is fixed percentage method in this system it is it is easiest of them all i think in this system a fixed percent or a fraction of the total uh, raw material cost is counted and uh, it is decided whether you have to pay 15 percent 20 or 25 depending on the type of wiring you are using and going through the table the description of the material that is total cost of the wiring material and the raw material cost comes to be 6500 and say we are taking a 15 percent fraction then the labor cost will count to 15 percent of 6500 that will be 975. Now, I'm discussing a few types of estimates. As we all know, what estimate is, it is you can say a probable cost of the work or the tentative cost of the work, and it is actually prepared before the project work is initiated. It is need indeed calculations or some computations of various engineering projects in order to have first hand knowledge of uh, the approximate cost which is likely to be uh, incurred including the quantities of various materials required or the labor involved for the satisfactory completion of the work types of estimates the first one is uh, preliminary or rough cost. It is also called approximate cost. Then it is also called abstract estimate. Now, the rough cost or the abstract estimate is prepared actually to decide the financial aspect and the policy metal. It will give an idea of the cost of the proposed project, you can say. The preliminary estimate is taken up after taking into consideration the requirements of the department concerned regarding the project to be taken up. Now, after uh, this um, estimate is done, it is presented to the competent sanctioning authority for the administrative approval and uh, the estimate accompanies a detailed report the necessity and the utility of the proposal actually uh, this preliminary estimate is based on the practical knowledge and cost of similar project completed earlier then comes the detailed estimate now after the preliminary estimate is sanctioned and uh, before inviting of the tenders is done a detailed estimate is prepared the detailed estimate is uh, sent to the competent authority for getting the technical section the detailed estimate the whole of the project is divided into sub works and cost of each of the work is calculated separately and then added together to give the total cost of the project. Now the cost of each item is worked accordingly to the prevailing market rates or from the sanctioned schedule of rates. And in case of non-scheduled rates, the proper analysis of the rates is prepared and attached with the detailed estimate. In case of the uh, detailed estimate, there is additional provision for uh, extra charges like carriage of the material and then some unforeseen expenses like contingencies because of the change in design, you may say, or because of some natural calamities. These are all included. The detailed estimate uh, should also include the cost of labor, then uh, material, 
equipment, overhead charges, profits, etc. And uh, along with the detailed report, it should uh, have uh, the detailed drawings. That means the drawing should be uh, different drawings for different works. Detailed specification for the execution of work and calculations and designs of the works. That means the total detailed report. The third one is supplementary estimate. Now, in case some additions are proposed to the original work or the original proposal, in fact, or the estimate, a new uh, or a fresh estimate is prepared. Now, this estimate is known as a supplementary estimate. And in this case, all the relevant papers like drawings, designs, estimate reports, which explain the necessity of the additional work are sent to the higher authorities for the final approval. Then comes the annual repair or annual maintenance estimate. Now, we all know that every electrical structure or wiring or machinery or some electrical control system uh, needs some repair to be carried out annually so that the system remains in the proper working condition all the time. Now, for this purpose, annual maintenance estimate is prepared. And it is mostly 1.5% of the capital cost of the work. The last one is the revised estimate. Now, in case there are some major changes in the project or some other reasons, such that the original sanction detailed estimate exceeds by 5% or more, then a revised estimate is done. And again, this one is done in, in the form of a detailed estimate as is prepared fresh like the one originally made. The revised estimate now should be accompanied by all the papers as in the case of the detailed estimate and also should include the comparative statements then uh, showing the variation in each item of work then its quantity, its original cost or the revised cost or savings and giving the reason of excess expenditure or saving in case of the items, in case of each of the items. Our last topic for today is the important factors for preparing a detailed estimate. Now, first one is the quantity of the material. Now, we all know that bulk purchases are always cheaper as compared to the smaller quantity of the material. So in this case, the rates should be framed according to the volume of the work. Second is the availability of the material. Now the material required for the project should be made available to the workers at the work, work site. In, in case this doesn't happen, the workers or the supervisor will remain idle and the estimated cost of the project will be higher because of the non-availability of the material at the work site. And but obvious that the uh, span of the project, completion of the project will increase. So there should be some foolproof system devised in order that uh, the material is provided on time. The purchase section should be made responsible for this. Next is the transportation of material. Similarly, as we said in the case of quantity of material, the cost of transportation of material in small quantity will be costlier as compared to the transportation of material in large quantity. Therefore, this aspect must be considered for economic reasons. Next is the location of the site. The site of the project is located at remote 
or odd place. And in this case, frequent loading, unloading is necessary several times, I should say. And due to different modes of transport, damage or loss of the material will be considered carefully. And the last one is availability of labor. Now, unskilled or semi-skilled local laborers at daily wages will obviously be some economical choice and they should be considered before preparation of the STP. Availability of labor locally will be quite cheaper uh, in comparison to the one we consider from outside. That's all for this time. We'll meet for lecture four. Thank you for listening.